Hey, this is Kevin Gonzo413 here with some gameplay of Soul Calibur 6, and today I'm going to be working on Soul Chronicle, the quote unquote story mode, which focuses on, on each of the characters of the series. Let's begin now. <laughs> Chronicles of Souls 1 Prologue. 1583 AD 1583, the Chronicle of Souls 1, Prologue Soul Edge, the story reaches far back into the darkest depths of history in the 16th century. The legend tried to rear its ugly head again. Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. Soul Edge, a legendary sword and devourer of souls. Buried in the darkest reaches of history, it was brought back to light in the 16th century. The notorious pirate Cervantes claimed the sword as his own, setting everything into motion. Soul Edge adapted itself to its new owner by splitting into two. Possessed by the evil weapons, Cervantes began a bloody reign of terror, slaying all those seeking the swords without prejudice. Cervantes was eventually undone. Under the protection of Hephaestus, the god of smithing, a female warrior named Sophitia was able to destroy one of the swords. Shards of the blade flew hmm. and lodged Good into her body, there. causing near mortal Even wounds. If it's Seeing game. his chance, Cervantes raised his sword to deliver the final blow. Suddenly, there appeared a ninja known as Taki, who rescued the wounded warrior. Taki defeated Cervantes in a battle to oh, the yeah. death before That's carrying girl, the injured Sophitia away. However, one of Soul Edge's two blades still remained. Perhaps it was fate. The blade fell into the hands of Siegfried, whose mind was twisted and unwell. of rampant evil, the evil seed. No one could have predicted it would become a catalyst for catastrophe across the world. Our story takes place in the 16th century. Yeah. Think I didn't notice that already, narrator? Fifteen eighty-three, eighty. The Chronicle of Souls Two: The Ling Shang Su Tragedy. An evil seed emanated from the cursed blade on the fateful day in Spain. It released a white light that burst forth, affecting lands far and wide, even as far afield as Ling Shang Su. A tragedy befell this place. Ling Shen Su Temple was a oh, famous nice martial painting. arts school in the far reaches of China. It's still though, it was it's there so Killick much. learned to master the staff after he was abandoned as a child. Killick ate and slept with the other students and began his training at a young age. Despite this, he established a family-like bond with just one other student, Shang Len, a young girl who was like an elder sister to him. Dedicated to the way of the sword, she looked after Killick as if they were siblings. So close was their bond that when one felt happy or sad, the other would feel the same. Together they studied and grew as warriors. Hmm. 
the years passed by. So that's Shang Lung, huh? Killing skill earned him a place as a teacher, an honorable position for one so young. Throughout the ages, Ling Sheng Su Temple had kept hold of the three sacred treasures: Krita Yuga, Devapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Killick's years of arduous training earned him the title of rightful bearer of the staff, Kali Yuga. Likewise, Shang Len was also designated bearer of Devapara Yuga, a sacred mirror. Our story begins on the night before the ritual for passing the treasures on to their new masters. Shang Lin, can I ask you something? Sure. She's cute. How come you were chosen to bear Devapara Yuga? <sighs> I thought you'd get Krita Yuga. After all, you've dedicated your life to the sword. <sighs> Kalik, this is not easy for me to talk about, but I'm going to try. The Krita Yuga, it's no longer at Ling Shang Su. The sword has been Yawn. gone for more than a decade. All that's left is the Kali Yuga and the Devapara Yuga. Really? Surprised? Well, there's more. The one who stole the Krita Yuga was none other than my father. That's why I don't have the right to bear it. If I were to accept the sword, everyone would be up in arms. That's why even though it was offered to me, I decided to decline. Of course, I love Ling Shang Su, and I do wish to see my studies through to their conclusion. It's just... I... I just don't want the sacred treasures, or my status as a sacred bearer, or anything else to hold me back. You know what the monks say. Mm -hmm. Fate, Fate is carved, carved with, with your, your own, own hands. When I spoke to them about that, they decided to let me bear Devapara Yuga instead. Now I can feel proud that I'm a sacred bearer just like you. Um... You know something, Killick? What? Uh, it's okay. Never mind. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Me too. And so it was Killick and Shang Len were set to attend the official ritual for becoming sacred bearers. Okay, but the night before cutscenes. the ritual, a terrible calamity plunged everything into chaos. Drawn by the Kali Yuga in Killik's hand, the evil seed came to Ling Shen Su Temple. The monks, driven insane by the evil force, began slaying each other, turning the temple into hell on earth. What have I done? I'm not faster. I don't understand. Everyone, stop this madness! Ah, oh, this cutscenes are so boring. Just nothing but still images.
It's kill or be killed. Scream is that? You no, know, I'd be more infested in these freaking cutscenes if they were actually showing what was going on instead of like giving us the bare minimum here. These fucking lazy, sad, still images. I'm not even done with the prologue, and I'm already bored. Chronicle of Souls 3. When Kilik awoke, he found himself in an unfamiliar cave temple. While he was passed out, an old man has been taking care of him. Aside from identifying himself as a weapons expert from Ling Shang Tzu, the old, old man spoke little. I'm not gonna lie though, the story and the writing is a bit is a lot more better than so than that of <clears throat> It's a lot more better than that of Soul Calibur 5. It's a big improvement, but still. Like, it's just, like, not enough, like, action going on and stuff. You need to show us what's Where happening, you know. I? Did you save me? Who are you? <sighs> you have yet to recover from your injuries. Rest. Is that the Edge Master? And that mirror, Devapara Yuga. Wear it yeah. always. There will be grave consequences if you do not. Understand? Uh. Oh, oh Sean Lin. <laughs> Damn. Yuga saved me. That means Shaolin. She gave it to me. She sacrificed her life for me. And then I, I, with my bare hands, why? Tell me, Shaolin, why am I still alive? Have you not realized yet? You are being protected. Devapara Yuga suppresses the evil within you. Evil? The old man proceeded to tell a tale. He told Killick about the evil seed. How Devapara Yuga had pulled Killick back from the brink of insanity. How Kali Yuga had the ability to absorb power, and how it was falling under an evil spell. And finally, he told Killick about Soul Edge. Your fate will be set in stone the moment you lose your will to live. Your soul will be swallowed whole by your destiny leaving behind but a rotten corpse. That is but one path you may take. But perhaps it is the path you wish to take. To submit to that evil sword and its wicked power? Is that what you wish? To become a thrall? Do you see? All is in your hands. Shang Lin. She, she told, told me, fate, fate is carved, carved with your own hands. Shang Lin gave her life so I could live. That, that leaves me only one choice. From that day forth, Killick bore the heavy weight of his karma. As Shang Lin slept.